go. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in today. Um, welcome back. We are very appreciative of everybody that has subscribed and tunes into our show. We've got some special things to dive in today. We got a special guest that's going to tap into some hot topics regarding some platforms, helping you empower and elevate your brand. So welcome Carl Salings. He is the founder of High Day, which to my understanding is a platform, but I'll let you dive into all of that juiciness. Welcome and thank you for coming on today. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Casey. Super happy to be here. Uh, very honored and, and uh, grateful. So High Day is an AI-powered all-in-one command center for the cannabis, vape, hemp, and psychedelic industry. Um, I, I, I created this platform out of my frustrations because I'm a legacy operator. I've been in cannabis since 2013. I, I started in San Diego um, was able to work my way through legalization uh, in 2018 and then uh, ended up uh, with the first license in a, a city called Hollister, California. And then after that, I um, took that company public, uh, kept building it, bought some other companies and uh, ended up stepping out of it uh, a, a couple years ago. And, you know, but like I was saying, um, High Day is built uh, pretty much out of my frustration for having to deal with all the different marketing platforms and uh, the different things in the cannabis industry. Oh, the, 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 the way that we get blocked and turned off and shut down and all this stuff really, really upset me. And I, I'm, I'm the type of guy when someone says that uh, I, I, I can't do something that I'm going to go do it. Um, so, yeah, so... Um, we launched High Day, and um, really, it, it's built for the industry by the industry. There's very few platforms out there for marketing um, that's built by people from the industry. Um, I'm not some tech dude that all of a sudden thinks, "Hey, I'm going to be in cannabis because I'm repurposing what I did over here, and now I'm in cannabis." I'm from cannabis, and um, you know, so, so it's made for cannabis by cannabis, at, like all kinds of cool stuff. Wow. Wow. I mean, that was a lot. I, yes, I think right. <laughs> no, that's perfect. We'll we'll chop it up and, and kind of dive into it into little sectors. That way they can kind of understand how they can utilize it for themselves, for their brand, personal branding. I love that we're talking about marketing. I think it's a big topic right now for a lot of in for one, there's legislation being where we're packaging is being changed and a lot of different states are going into that route. So obviously that affects marketing or the marketing funnel, I should say. I have grown to love the strategy that is out there today about marketing, but I think there is a misunderstanding when it comes to marketing and branding at the same time. Um, on top of that, it sounds like you are also helping with how they're distributing the content that somebody may be creating to get the word out by avoiding the censorship. So let's dive into, um, I'm actually on your site now. Before we jump into that, can I ask you a little bit about your morning routine? I asked all my guests that um, just sure. to see a little bit of how cannabis plays, a, you know, in your lifestyle. So um, for me, it's always been part of my life for probably since I was, you know, right out of high school. I, it's always been a recreational thing for me. I use it for my fitness and my bodybuilding journey. So I'm curious to know if you have a morning routine that has any sort of fitness or wellness um, routine in it. And do you use cannabis at the same time to amplify that or enhance, you know, your morning? Great question. So, <clears throat> I wake up at 5 a.m. pretty much seven days a week. Nice. Um, I, I start my day with a uh, <clears throat> about 36 ounces of water mixed in with some uh, creatine and some other vitamins that I take first thing in the morning. Then I have a bulletproof coffee, um, which is um, coffee with uh, grass-fed butter and MCT oil. I, I kind of changed it around. I, I use... Uh, yeah, coconut creamer um, that's sugar-free that I like. Um, and then I uh, journal, I read, um, I kind of plan my day, and then I work out. Um, nice. That's pretty much every day. Um, and I like to read or listen to an audiobook as well. So I 
minimally, I'm probably like 30 to 40 books a year um, just from in the morning. It's pretty amazing. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I completely can resonate with that. Is this part of a program that you've inherited and picked up or is this just something that's always been um, obviously growing, you know, as you get older, something that you've built into your habits? Well, earlier I was a little bit more crazy and I gave it four and, and started, but I, I, I really didn't like that uh, long term. I, I think it started, I, I read this book called The Miracle Morning. Um, I forget the guy that wrote it, um, but it, it made a lot of sense. You know, so, so for me, the period of five till I would say nine or 10, that's all my time. And, and, and I get to really focus on myself, uh, make sure that I work out because nine out of 10 times, if I don't work out in the morning, I'm really not going to do it uh, just because I get caught up and it, it just doesn't happen. And, um, you, know, you know, fitness and health is very important to me, kind of something that's cool. Um, I'm on the tail end of uh, becoming 55, which is kind of shocking. I, I look a lot younger than uh, 55, but when I was in 1999, Christmas of 99, uh, beginning of 2000, I was 325 pounds. Um, I, I was able to uh, successfully lose all that weight. And uh, in 2011, I, I ended up competing in men's physique. Um, you mentioned something about bodybuilding, so. I'm all shut up. No yeah. way. <laughs> That's so dope. Love I, that. uh, I didn't win, but I won even being there, honestly. Um, I think I came in like 13th or, or, or something, but I honestly didn't care. I, I just being there up on the stage um, showing, you know, what I was able to accomplish. And it's all hard work. And, and really, it's it comes down to discipline. That's mm -hmm. what is the key. And, and you need to make that decision because like the Greek word of decide is to like cut off. So you cut yes. off all other, all other possibilities and just kind of have blinders. And I mean, I think daily planning, the 5 a.m. wake up. I mean, that's all part of it. it. And and it spills over into pretty much everything I do. I love that. I recently just read that about the Greek word uh, with the discipline um, in PBD's yeah. book. And I think um, that book I'm really enjoying right now. That's something I've picked up doing 75 hard, which is why I was asking, you know, if you picked up a, a particular challenge or program. It's not a challenge. It's really like a program enhancer uh, to kind of guide you to really building that grit. But it is it's a lot of the mental work and the discipline that trickles over into the other aspects of our life that I'm starting to notice now getting closer to 40 and being a mom of two. So thankfully, fitness has always been part of my life. I call it it's like my my non-negotiable for myself as well. And I love the morning routine. It's very similar to mine. I don't think if I didn't start incorporating like 10 pages a day of reading a book, which made it very simple and consistent, that I wouldn't have accumulated so many uh, reads and so much, you know, a short period of time. And that's just slowly been a habit that I've in, ingrained in the past like two years. So I'm really enjoying that because you just do learn. If you're open to being a sponge at whatever age, you know, be having that child childlike personality and mindset to constantly wanting to learn and be curious about things, I think you, you know, you can go far. So I'm hoping to stay in that mindset. So thank you for sharing that. I love that. I had no idea that you competed. You know, I competed in MPC, uh, the bikini. I have to say when I say bodybuilding and I have to tell people in our audience that not bodybuilding where I'm like super yoked. I, there's different categories. So, you know, for me, for the women's, it was the, um, the bikini side, but we're still putting in equally as much work. We're oh. just, you know, a different size and symmetrically different, but. Totally. I'm Same for me. I was in the physique, which I got to wear board shorts instead of little. Yes. Which I what was year? Uh, what year? 2011. 2011. Okay. So I was a little bit right behind you. I was 2015 through 2018. Uh, funny, you know, my first class, my first show in Santa Monica, I don't know if you ever did a show out in Culver City. Um, I ended up, you know, 
I got my class and then I ended up winning that class and I had no idea that was a placing to nationals. And I was like, holy shit. And that, you know, just the experience of, you know, the tanning. I know if you've competed, it's like, holy shit, this is a whole different world. But we could talk about that all day. I'm sure I, I'm glad that that's part of your, you know, your your wellness routine and your fitness is still very much alive. And um, like you said, I think the way you are aware of your body kind of transfers in the same way of how people are starting to use cannabis and plant medicine in general. So to that point, thank you for sharing the morning routine. I hope people can learn from that or maybe, you know, start tapping into a few of those. Well, on that note, curious to know what are the options now on the website when it comes to branding? Um, are we talking about maybe, you know, can we dive in? Maybe let's say you want to give us some scenarios of how to best use your um, platform and who you know, can better benefit from it depending on what they have as far as products. Sure. So just to kind of set the framework, we're the platform that enables your branding to soar or your, your, your marketing to go. We don't create the marketing, but we're, we're, we're like the um, MailChimp or the active campaign, but for cannabis. So our platform is great for startups, for brands, for retailers, and for e-com all in this industry. So let's just take a brand, whether you're new or an existing brand, you know, part of the challenge with brands, especially uh, in cannabis and selling into the dispensary market is the bud tender. Uh, they are the, the, the people that are frontline facing to the consumers coming into the dispensary. So having them really educated on your brand is vitally important. So in our system, we have a whole uh, membership area that you can create what would I call a brand indoctrination course? Let's call it a series of, let's say, five videos that, that takes them through your brand ethos, what your products are about, how they should be selling it, the talking points, all this, all this stuff that you would want these people to understand and learn. And then it's a whole journey through a membership portal and you can track if they've watched your video, they get a certificate at the end that they're now an official uh, trained bud tender for your brand or whatever you want to call it. It's all customizable, but that way um, it's on their time um, or, or even during the day, but, but it's not, you know, there's not a whole lot of friction. It's really hard to, to get these bud tenders to do stuff and, and you can gamify it by offering some other prizes, things like that. So that's definitely one way. And then our system allows you to um, proactively communicate via SMS, via email, also um, social media. So all your Instagram DMs, your Facebook Messenger, all comes into one spot, which is pretty amazing. And we just added WhatsApp, too, so you can now communicate through our system through WhatsApp, which a lot of people in this industry use. Is there... Uh, I, I've noticed that in the past two years is there a reason why what's is it because of the dialogue that it's able to retain uh, well before meta bought whatsapp they were very let, let's say private and more secure than a cell phone conversation mm. uh, now that mm. meta bought them, I, I think it's changed people are gravitating to signal and telegram as well uh but you, you know for the mm. security aspect of it um because we're still all talking about things that aren't federally legal yet <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah. Talking about that, actually. Uh, well, before we dive into that, I'm sure that'll be a whole different subject because I know everybody's being, you know, there's there's a little bit of um, talk about what's going on federally with the descheduling. Um, OK, so it sounds like we can use it's a one stop shop. And um, if I wanted to, you know, distribute content, you guys have the option of doing it to where you're not having to sit there and go on each platform. Um, that's really cool. I mean, yeah. that, I mean, me being a content creator myself, that saves a lot of time. Um, on top of that, the SMS, I think that's huge. I think, you know, that's just been applied recently in the past, maybe five years. Uh, Gary V is really big about uh, adopting that into your you know, way of marketing and attaining acquisitions. So um, we'll put everything in the link here, but kind of how does it work? Let's say I am ready to rock and I'm a small brand, I'm a startup. Where would I begin? Yeah, so the best spot would be to come to the site, uh, gethighday.com. 
and uh, sign up for a demo. There's no cost to it, and that, that'll give you a really good view of what the system can do for you and if it makes sense for you. And then it's super easy to get started. We don't really have any long-term contracts, just three-month minimum, uh, because we're the the major difference, especially with our SMS, is we built the S, we build a route for you. So it's not something where you have this unlimited pipe of um, SMS that you can just you know send a bunch down. It, we need to grow with you and, and build it just because of the nature and how sensitive it is with the carriers. Um, so it just makes it a little bit more challenging, but um, it, it's definitely the way to go. Thank you. I appreciate you breaking that down. I also didn't, I kind of hovered over it, but I noticed that you have like, it's an, there's AI features that are also implemented in there that you can use, which is really cool. huge. Yeah. You want to tap into that um, yeah. as they're, you know, I know AI is kind of, you know, new to everybody, especially if you're not a big content creator, you're like, keep that away from me. I'm not ready for it, but it's here. And I think the more we can learn about it and the, you know, use it to the best that we can to still stay organic with our branding. I think, you know, it's a huge level up. Totally. And it's not going away. Like the level that it is today, this is the worst it'll ever be from today forward now. Right. So it, it, it it's important to embrace it, at least to understand it, even if you are afraid of it, but don't want to use it, you, you can't get left behind. Like this image here is made from AI. Um, so in high day, we have a couple different features. So um, we built a, an AI assistant, kind of like Jasper, that can help you write content like blog articles, uh, product titles, descriptions, emails, all that stuff uh, that you can then copy and paste right into our system. Uh, but then in our system, we have it integrated. It's an upgrade but it, it can actually um, create a, an image for you while you're posting your social media. It can create uh, and give you prompts and ideas for social media content. Mm. Um, and then it, it can actually, in, in our automations, it can connect with chat GPT and then bring in um, conversations that are, have, that are being had and then save them. Uh, and then we have a website live chat feature uh, that we can put on on your website that we can automate with AI. So AI can start the conversation with your prospect or customer, um, either qualify them and actually book an appointment on your calendar for you, or even link them to a product on your website. So let's say someone's on your website and like, you know what, what's your best indica or, 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 or what do you have for sleep or pain and the AI is trained on all your products, on all your stuff on your website, and it knows what that is. It'll answer and then link that person to that product. It's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't know it was going to go to that extent. You know, I use it in creative ways. I know people are using it to help them, you know, create you know, titles for this, you know, thumbnails for YouTube. Uh, I mean, we, that is fascinating. Crazy. I, I, yeah. I have a whole kind of alter ego called Digital Blaze. Mm -hmm. and it's all cannabis themed music, but it's Ooh. all done by AI. Like I, I've got a song, um, I got dabbed out. <laughs> and another one, Fast the Joint Pitch. <laughs> it's a rap song. Oh. It's, really sober. It's, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, stuff. I think people are, uh, you know, not that you have to be into technology, but if you're open to it, there's a little funness into playing with what it can do for you guys. I know our sponsor for, for our show, Fat Next Magazine, also uses AI for some of the creative work they do. So we're really happy that other people in the cannabis industry are open to using it and are helping other brands kind of help you know, their, their brands elevate by using it and not be so hesitant to go that route. Um, anything else that you have going on as far as events? I know I personally met you in person at, um, MJ BizCon week at Blunt Brunch. And then I'm sure you, you had a great week at MJ BizCon. It was completely popping. Uh, how was that for you? And do you have anything coming up that's similar to the conferences or any hot events? So MJ Biz was great. I never have bought a booth. I've been to all of them that have been in Vegas. So I think there was two prior to that. 
Um, we've only like done parties and, and sponsored parties. This year, I, I was just kind of hanging out. Um, I, I was part of a, a really cool uh, suite um, environment called, um, from from this dude, Michael Dillon from uh, Drops uh, out of Arizona. Uh, that was cool to be part of. Um, just met lots of people, see all my friends, because I've, I've been in this industry a while. So there's lots of people I don't get to see very often, but I, I get to see them there. Um, mm -hmm. That was awesome. I, I ended up getting landlocked at, at the hotel takeover because I um, my, my friend Scott Ball had this uh, – the, this mushroom extract, I tried it. It was really good, and I didn't leave. So it was funny. Like everybody that a bunch of people I wanted to see were there, but I didn't see anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They saw you. That's yeah, okay. Yeah. You were and, there in school. The uh, next show uh, we're going to is Champs in Las Vegas in February because the, the hemp industry they are also our, our clients as well. Uh, and then as far as that, that's kind of you know. We'll, we'll definitely be back at, at MJ Biz, probably a 420 event somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm working on some music stuff. I'm, I'm super um, big into music and cannabis kind of combined, but, you know, metal and, and hard rock, uh, yeah. not rap. Like we did a project uh, with Clown from Slipknot um, back in uh, 20, um, 2020. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this, but this is what we did. It was a box of uh, bubble hash infused pre-rolls. So hopefully I'm, I'm going to be involved in more things like that. Yeah, I know Slipknot has been actually pretty heavy in the industry. I know a couple people that have worked with them. Um, so that's really exciting. I know the other celebrities in that industry, just music in general is huge. Obviously, we know hip hop has always been, um, you know, pathway for for cannabis it's just been yeah. part of the entertainment but so has uh rock i don't think i see it too much uh heavy metal i you know it's not something that i listen to too much anymore i used to when i was in high school but yeah i love seeing the collaborative brands and the different you know partnership that you're seeing with the legacy people helping the celebrities really package something that's quality and not just you know a label and and having a, a line out there so i love that you're able to tap into those um different markets as well with the cannabis industry still very much part of it now you talk about hemp well if i'm from a different state this is all you know internationally i'm able to use this platform worldwide um so you are able to use it worldwide um some places we're not able to do sms um so for example the us no problem canada uh, we have sms for canada we're, we're actually just launching into canada um, I'm working on Thailand and Germany and all the other places where cannabis is happening uh, and hemp. Um, so in those countries today, right now, we can do WhatsApp like immediately um, mm -hmm. working on the, the, the different SMS uh, components for those countries. Nice. Nice. I had to ask just to make sure our audience knows if they're not from Cali, you still can use it. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is for, we're not, we don't have the same issues that you do operating an actual plant touching cannabis business where every state we right. need to do licensing and all that stuff. We yeah. Don't have that. yeah. Nice and simple, huh? Well, that's what we're looking for. You know, keeping, you know, um, time efficient and the distribution of the content to get out because in today's world, marketing is so crucial and the way and the way it's distributed because content creating is also a big deal and having influencers and affiliates is, is another way to collaborate word of mouth. So I think it's a level up if you take the time to invest in that. So I love the work that you're doing. I know you've been in the industry for a really long time and you're an OG, which is probably why you got that hat on. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people in the industry are buzzing about Emerald Cup. It's their 20th annual anniversary. It's coming up May 4th and 5th. It's like the whole two day smoke fest. I've been 18th and 19th. Um, where did you, where, is that hat firm? Do you know what, do you remember maybe what year and did I you get it? 17. Um, 17. Okay. Cause I, I, I think this might've been the only year they've done this a hat like this. Did um, you get it as a judge? Were you I had a VIP um, ah. 
badge. Nice. And, and I think this came with it. it. Either came with it or, or I bought it. Like I, I, I have like five uh, of the hats from this company. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I think it's called California. Um, Dope. Grassroots California. Yeah. I love the color of it too. And yeah. I mean, California I here. see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Always repping. I'm sure. Um, do you come from family that's in the cannabis industry or is this something that you decided like on your own since you were a, a rebel? Probably. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I've been a rebel my entire life. Um, <laughs> I first tried cannabis when I was 10. Um, so I was an early adopter. Um, had a bunch of craziness when I was younger, um, but I got out of all that when I was uh, 16 and uh, pretty much have only consumed cannabis uh, since then. I, I mean, I had some alcohol every now and then, but alcohol was never really big for me. Never really liked it too much. So I don't drink at all now. Um, and mm. I consume cannabis. I'm on no medications whatsoever, zero, other than um, supplements. And, and cannabis. That's it. Which is a supplement, in my opinion. You yeah. know, it's one of our slogans, enhanced way of living. Exactly. It's like, you know, you you if you're a bodybuilder, you know you're enhancing your body with particular supplements that you need to get to a certain level. Not to say that you're not going to work your ass off because that's also misunderstood. Uh, but I see it the same way, kind of like superfood at the same time. So I'm glad that, you know, you're out there, you're thriving, you're still positive, and you're still, you know, being a light in the community, even though, you know, obviously cannabis has been part of your life for a really long time you where can we find you and um any message to our audience before we let you go and do our rapid fire um you can find me at uh, gethighday.com uh plus i'm on linkedin uh carl sailing um those are the best places to connect <clears throat> and you know, with cannabis and hemp and everything else in this type of industry, marketing such a challenge. Don't beat yourself up and try to use all these tools and, you know, paper clip it together. Get a platform that does everything for you. And, and that's High Day, where every day feels like Friday with High Day. That. All right. You guys heard it here. Make sure you guys go check it out. High day. It's going to help you guys elevate yourselves, empower your marketing and branding and probably make it a lot more easier on you. So take advantage of that. We'll put all the links in the description here below. If you guys enjoy this conversation or have questions, make sure you guys also put that in the comments. All right, Carl, let's get cracking. We got seven grams. Just curious to know what cannabis looks like for you in your day to day. Question number one, grinders or fingers? Grinders, if I can. Good answer. Um, dispensary or plug? Uh, dispensary, because I, I paid a lot of money for all my licenses that I had. So definitely dispensary. Good yeah, that's right. All right. For Terps, are you more floral or gasoline? Um, so I like everything uh, pretty much. Um, so it depends on, on what's happening. Uh, so I like them both. Okay. Okay. Do you have a preference if you were to go towards, um, you know, more of a skunky permanent marker smell versus a citrusy floral uh, smell? One of my favorite strains is sour diesel. So that's a mm. gas. Yeah. I was going to say that's an OG gas, which yeah. I love. Yeah. It, huge fan of like Some of the fruity stuff. I mean, um, a DJ blueberry is amazing. Mm, I haven't tried that. I'll have to keep my eye out. Um, I will say that's what I do like about going to the dispensaries, getting familiarized with the uh, amazing names. These are these genetics are getting because, you know, the lineage is, is somewhere in there, but, you know, they're getting fancy with names. So when someone says something, I'm like, oh, I don't think I've seen that yet, but I'll have to try that out. All right. Next question. Bong tokes or joints? Um, hmm. That depends. It, if um, if it's just me, usually bongs, but I, I do like an infused pre-roll. So mm -hmm. um, I like them both. Yeah. yeah. I'm an equal opportunity uh, smoker. <laughs> <clears throat> Any preference though? Like your day-to-day? -day, like what do you normally um, smoke out of all day? 
Uh, my day to day, I smoke out of this I Spire dab oh, ring. Shout out to Aspire. Shout out to Luna, I Spire. Yep. I got mine too. Yeah, I love that gig. Um, their 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 whole marketing, you know, since we talked about marketing, is primo. Great job there. Uh, all right, papers or leaves? Papers. Uh huh. I'm noticing a lot of people are still leaning that way. I just have a. Um, I'm not a good leaf roller, you know. So. Would you smoke a blunt? Oh yeah, as long as it was like, I mean, um, if it was not tobacco. Ah, uh, okay. Hemp leaf. It was, it was yeah, a hemp. banana leaf. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I liked banana leaves, you know, being Filipino. Can't, can't hate the banana leaves. All right. Live resin or rosin? Rosin. Yeah. Any particular but in the pitch, pitch. resin. <laughs> <laughs> to that. But any particular brands right now that you're digging on the rosin? Well, so my buddy started a brand in Colorado called Eden. Uh, and he had he he's a longtime Humboldt grower, but but he's got this like Korean regenerative farming technique. So he goes out into the woods of the area and and wildcrafts the nutrients and makes them and brings them into the into the garden. He has all kinds of cover crops. I mean, like California wouldn't allow you to grow like this because they get all tweaky, but there's all kinds of worms and all kinds of stuff. Like it's living in his soil. It's so amazing. And the plants are just praying like so happy. It's the, I mean, I've been in probably a thousand grows. This is one of the best grows I've ever seen. And it's all for fresh frozen to live rosin. Oh, and wow. I've got a nice jar of it and it's amazing. <laughs> oh, what, what is it? What strains are, are, are like, what are you smoking right now? I should say. Um, I, I've got a uh, Tahoe uh, white cookies. <sighs> Ooh. And then, uh, honey banana. The honey banana is like insane. I mean, it's like <laughs> when you smoke it, when you smoke yeah. something that's really amazing, the flavor, it's like, num, 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 num. it's so yeah. amazing. It is. It is. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. It's definitely my new, my new cup of tea nowadays. Okay. So last but not least, Cheech or Chang or half baked? Um, maybe, maybe well, multiple. I mean, I, I did a licensing deal with Tommy Chung, uh, and and we made a uh, tincture for him. It was called um, uh, Tommy Chung's Choice Elixir. So I will go with Cheech and Chung. There you go. There you go. Uh, I talked to somebody the other day. They're like, well, if we're talking about comedians, it's one thing. If we're talking about, you know, somebody that's within our culture and, and really was part of that bread, then, you know, we'll got to stick to Cheech and Chung. And that's for sure. All right. Well, I really appreciate the time you spent with us today. Um, you know, I hope to see you at Emerald Cup. I know a lot of people in the industry will be there. It's two days festival. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see who brings the heat this year. I'm hoping I applied to be a judge. So I'm hoping that I could share that experience with everybody and I'll definitely, you know, make sure that all the links to high day is on our description below, but really appreciate your time and, you know, looking forward to grow with you in the community. Thank you so much, Casey. I'm, I'm super happy and uh, proud of you and, and everything that you're doing in the industry. It's awesome. You know, we need more women um, in this industry kicking ass. Um, just one thing to touch on that. My wife was my co-founder and, um, you know, without her, the business would have never gotten anywhere. So. I love that dream team. You know, it's the same thing here. It's me and my husband. If it wasn't for his continuous support in what we do, and I don't mean, you know, just financially, I'm just talking about, it takes a lot in, of energy and we have two little kids. If you have a family and, and equally as important to your, your goals is that you've got to have that teamwork. So I can appreciate and respect that. So thank you to the misses. Um, again, Carl, I hope to see you soon. And um, if there's anything we can do here at Chifo, please let us know. We're always here to support you. Awesome. Thank you. See you guys. Thanks, guys. Peace. Peace.